all right. So, continuing here, this, this lecture almost seems like a lecture on SCID as compared to the T cell and B cell, uh, T cell receptors and immunoglobulin, but this is very important thing. Understanding pathology to this level is a very interesting and important thing to do. All right, so now the recombinase have, has picked up V1 from this pool, has picked up D3 from this pool. Remember you were a recombinase with me as well, so you were picking up something else. So maybe you picked up D1 or 2 or D20. The J chain came here, so the, the J gene pool and then the constant we picked up one of them. Although when we will do the immunoglobulin, you will see that the very first time when the constant regions are picked up, there are mu and delta both are picked up together. That is why the very first time a B cell encounters an infection, an antigen, it actually makes M and D both. M goes out in, in the blood, D sticks on the surface of the B cell. So if somebody says that a B cell cannot express more than one type of immunoglobulins at this at one time that somebody would be wrong. Why? The very first time when a B cell becomes active and starts making immunoglobulins, it makes M and D and then it would do class switching and from N it would go to G and from there it would go to E and then A, but in the beginning it can make M and D and that is because of alternate splicing. We will talk about that when we will go to the uh, immunoglobulins. So anyways, regardless of that point, let us say we got in the mu gene. Now what will happen is, we will do, we will create the RNA from here. So we will make a messenger RNA, but we would splice off all the J's and we will just keep one. So the messenger RNA which you will see will have transcription with V1, D3, let us say J1 in my case and then C mu. This is going to make the immunoglobulin. So this would be, now one more thing please remember, V, D and J. So I am going to make the molecule back here. The variable regions, variable region, variable region, constant region, constant region, variable region, constant region, variable constant, constant and constant, constant 1, constant 2 and constant 3, constant 2 and constant 3. In this immunoglobulin, the mu here, now connect the dots, connect the dots, the mu here is going to take part and make the heavy chain while the V, D and J are going to make the variable portion of the heavy chain. So I would say it this way, the recombination, the rearrangement of the DNA for V, D and J gene pools will give rise to the variable regions of heavy chain. On the other hand, V and J, no D. V and J will combine to give rise to variable region of light chain, V and J. So light chain is lighter, it is smaller, so the gene pool is smaller as well. So what is that? V and J. So light chain variable region recombination of V and J genes, heavy chain variable region recombination of V, D and J. The constant part is all of them V, D, J and C and that is the C which gives rise to this constant part and what does class switching mean? Class switching mean that instead of mu we will put the G or we will put D or E or A and so this handle will be different while the variable region will be the same. So antigen specificity will be the same but the function biological function of the immunoglobulin molecule will be different. So we will talk about those molecules later on. This is how an immunoglobulin molecule DNA rearrangement works. What I have not covered 
is alternate splicing. What I have not covered is DNA re rearrangement for class switching because this is really not a lecture about the immunoglobulin. This is a lecture to figure out how the gene pools are used to create this molecule. I wanted to use this foundation then to say to you that this is the same mechanism that is used to create the T cell receptors. Same mechanism, same way. The only thing is T cell receptor does not have the constant gene pool which can make these handles. Rather the T cells constant area is only going to be a very small peptide which has gotten disulfide bonds with it and that helps it anchor into the cell. So, if we come back here V, D and J are active to make T cell receptor same like immunoglobulin. Constant region makes a slightly different structure. So, here is how the T cell receptor is. So, this is a T cell. The T cell is a receptor is a dimeric protein with V and constant regions. It has alpha or beta chains. These dimeric proteins have gotten this is the constant part. So, this constant part has nothing, no functional or structural resemblance to the constant part of an immunoglobulin. Now, um, disulfide bonds here. What else? Oh, one more thing that these chains or segments have gotten carbohydrates attached to them. So, they have gotten these are glycoproteins instead of just simple proteins. So, that is what is a T cell receptor and that is what are the functions of the T cell receptor. The function of the T cell receptor is really antigen binding. T cell receptor stays stuck to the T cell, it does not go free. It is a dimeric protein very much similar to the FAB function, FAB segment of a immunoglobulin. That is about it, that is our lecture. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We will continue with the next lecture and that will be the T cell functions. After that we will go to B cells, immunoglobulins and allergic reactions, transfusions and pathology of immunology. Thank you very much.